year to 108 billion US dollars as shoppers continue to buy from home. While Twitter saw continued declines in user growth, earnings were ahead of expectations and Office Cloud software company Australia's Atlassian, which is listed in the US, posted record quarterly revenues, even as some of the general workforce left their home to return to the office. They're really setting the trend for the rest of uh, the earnings season um, you know, by really delivering strong numbers. So the overall sentiment will actually be focused on looking at these names and, and how well that they've done. Positive tech results along with good economic growth numbers helped the market there to close higher with S&P 500 at record levels. It didn't translate to our share market though, which had its worst day in four weeks as month end selling hit the region. The banks were lower along with our big miners, some retailers like Harvey Norman Rose. The Australian dollar is a little weaker against the US dollar and mixed across the other major global currencies. AMP has narrowly avoided a second strike against its new remuneration report at its annual general meeting today, which would have triggered a vote to spill its board. The company faced questions about numerous failed turnaround plans as its share price languished. AMP is planning to demerge its capital private markets business after talks to sell that unit ended earlier this month. AMP having to pay bonuses to retained its key staff despite not paying dividends to its shareholders. That's obviously you know, lending a lot of tension between shareholders and the AMP shareholder board. The company has pledged to restart paying dividends when market and business conditions permit. Recent rains and a minimal impact from COVID-19 has boosted confidence in regional areas of Australia, which are now desperately calling out for more workers to help continue to grow their local economies. The Regional Australia Institute says demand for workers has hit an all-time high, with more than 66,000 jobs available in regional towns and cities across the country in March. The standout sector driving demand is healthcare and social assistance, followed by public administration and safety and progressional scientific and technical services. Overall, only about 25% of the jobs are, are low-skilled jobs. The vast majority are skilled trades, professions uh, and sort of semi-skilled trades uh, and other occupations. The Institute wants to see more post-school vocational and training programs in regional areas to develop their own workforce, a weak point that's been highlighted by the international border closures affecting the supply of skilled workers. The Institute is also telling city folk to consider a tree change for better quality of life. And if you're driving to regional areas for a weekend away sometime soon and hiring a car, be prepared to pay top prices. The Bureau of Statistics said earlier this week that car rental costs surged nearly 24% in the March quarter due to increased interstate travel demand. And Ricardo, those costs are up 59%. Supply and demand. Thanks, Virginia. Coming up next, in a historic first, the Australian government will subsidise a medicinal cannabis product. And will the Olympics have to go ahead without any fans at all?